Well, hello, hello, and it is Tuesday Choice Day, and if this little guy would stay still, I wanted to introduce you to Bailey. He's the latest fiery little addition, and he wants to go to our pack, and he is incredible. He reminds me so much of carrying um, baby cheetah medicine. He's fierce as anything. And we're making great progress introducing him to the rest of the pack. My great Dane is terrified of him. And um, I'm wondering if, like Winston, he will end up uh, lying on top of Rover because he's so hot in, this, in the winter time. And Daisy, my three-legged dog's just incredible with cats. They, they absolutely love her. She's got that gentle kapha energy and um, she's already sort of taken it upon herself to be the cat sitter and check his movements because he's so quick and he's jumping all over the place in, in here playing with my wires right now. But uh, yeah, so th there's been lots of joy and new love and new life in our house which has been amazing. And I wanted to talk to you quickly today while I had um, some time between mm. sessions to to just rem remember lovingly that even if you feel like your cats are not that into you or your dogs or your horse, hey, Bailey, come, baby. So distracting. And it maybe makes you really sad um, to just remember that oftentimes our animals want to know, hey, come here. Come here, gorgeous boy. Come say hi. Come say hi. Mm -hmm. They want to know, you know, what's in it for them. And I often get asked a lot of times more with dogs and horse um, stewards why their horses are so eager to engage or why their animal, their, their dogs are just so happy uh, to be with them. And I think that this is where really what comes down to moving from trauma to trust is um, to lead through inspiration, communication through two-way inspiration and ask your animal, are you with me? Do you want to do this? Do you want to play with your catnip mouse? Or do you just want to play like Bailey, explore the big old world, hey? Because everything's so big. And um, and just know that that's what, what your, your animal companions really want. They want balance um, between training and playing and sleeping and working within the skills that maybe your dog or your horse has and enjoys and adding challenge to keep them stimulated. And this is really what this means when I talk about being inspired through two-way um, dialogue is that if you're, if you're yeah. kind of feeling like your animal's just not that into you, um, start by making a list of you know, what does your horse or your cat or your dog enjoy doing and what don't they enjoy doing and really um, ac accept them. I think that's the most important thing is accept them for who they are. If you haven't taken the Dosha quiz, it's a great place to start to really um, deepen into right relationship and more compassion and more patience with with our animal friends. Um, to just know that they that just like us, they're wired in a certain way based on their experience of their rescue animals and maybe haven't um, had a good experience with humans before. And also what their dosha type is. If they're if they are oriented towards service, give them a job. You know, they come to us with their own soul contracts and their own lessons to teach us and make us better human beings. And um, they're constantly wanting to be inspired and learn and grow themselves with you. So acceptance and allowance of who they really are and what they have to offer, um, what lessons they bring to you is key in developing a deep desire for our animals to want to be with us and to want to learn new tricks. And um, I think oftentimes our projections and our expectations and our stories about other animals, you know, they're all just like us. They're, they're unique. There's a, they're one of a kind. There's nobody with their makeup, with their, hi kitty, with, with their um, personality on the planet, just like you. And I think when we can start to show, see that and 
embrace and enjoy who they are being. It gives us more compassion to be an allowance of what other people are choosing and what they, how they are wired and what inspires them, especially if you have children. I always think children and animals, hey, come here, you are very similar. Sorry, this is he's just so cute and so fast and very distracting. And remember too, you know, that if you are training, um, whether that's uh, you know, learning, uh, learning to walk on a lead if you've got a new puppy or learning to trust again if you have an older shelter dog or cat or a horse that perhaps has um, not had a happy life, to stay focused on what is right rather than what's wrong about everything. And that's a great question. And there comes my dog. Um, and there comes the other dog. And now we have two, the kitten and the dogs in, in the house. Hi, Rover. So just remember to spend 90% um, in the feel-good space and then 10% on certain tasks or trainings that you want want them to do. Mm -hmm. You know, how would you feel if every time you sort of turned up to work, your your boss focused on what, you know, and criticized and, uh-uh, mm -hmm. Daisy, um, want, wanted you to improve. Dude, please will not you just call the dogs out? Because I'm just doing a Facebook Live and I, and I can't see where the kitten is. Um, he's under my desk, I think. So... Just remember that if you know if someone's constantly nagging and criticizing you um, about all the things that you're not good at or the things that you don't that they don't like about you, there's no inspiration to change it. So you'd be miserable, and our animals are the same. They're sentient beings, and they have feelings. And um, this is a really good approach, regardless of the species that shares your life with you and is is come into your life with their with, with soul contracts to to teach you and um, grow you as much as you're teaching and growing them. So, you know, if always end on a high note, um, if you are doing training um, or, or they do something that you want them to do, uh, reward them, tell them, gosh, you must be so proud of yourself. Um, well done, always end on a high. And instead of trying to focus on what you didn't achieve or you didn't accomplish or, what you think needs fixing but put yourself in your in your dog's body or your horse's hooves or your kitten's tail and just imagine um how bad that kind of negative critical focus would make you feel and i always say that's this to all my clients is spend 90 percent of your time um in sessions or um if you're if you're at puppy training or you're wanting to teach your cat to um, do do something different or let them brush their teeth or brush their coats, uh, to to spend ninety percent of the time making them feel good and building their confidence, just like you would as a child, and perhaps yeah. just as you perhaps maybe didn't get as a child in that place of secure attachment. Treat everything, whether they're human or animal, as you would want to be treated, as the Bible says, do unto others as you would have done unto you. And make them feel, it always makes them feel good, um, feel confident and feel happy and proud of themselves. Hey, kitten. Um, you know, and, and they'll want to be with you when, you when you come from that positive affirmation space and spend the 10% of that in that space of growth and learning learning new tricks and um and see what happens because when you start to inspire through two-way dialogue and go i see you what do you need from me and and give them that balance of working within the skills that they enjoy and that they've learned that's that's rover that space feels really really good my great dame can open doors so it makes for an, for an interesting life. I can't even go to the toilet with, without the door being opened on me, so I don't even bother anymore. But just remember, you know, when you're working out how much challenge you need to provide for your dog or your horse, um, cats not so much because we know that they're independent and they'll only do what they want to do. But if you, you know, if your if you're horse or your dog's feedback is moment by moment, remember they're always present in the moment. 
um, you'll know what you need to do next and that's really the power of choice so if you're going to be a trainer or a dog whisperer or a, a, a cat uh, whisperer whatever you choose to do or you just want to deepen your relationship with your animals listen be a good listener first and foremost and um well done daisy you're such a good cat you're such a good cat babysitter aren't you um so listen listen first and always and then you'll know where they need to find balance or harmony or congruence or, or if there's pain or there's something going on in their body. And always think outside the box. Um, yes, my girl. Hey, kitten. Um, you know, expand outside of what you think you know. Always have a beginner's mind because that's the best place to be when you perhaps need to reassess what's working and what's not working and where you want to go um, with your horse or your dog or your cat or your bearded dragon. Um, and, and share that with them because if, if you want a beautiful relationship with your, with your animals uh, and you want them to be willing uh, to be with you hey you're so fierce you know stop mm -hmm. trying to fix them and and embrace who they are embrace that they have concerns and worries and because they spend so much time in our space that um, just like us we need to be adaptable to their needs and and flexible in what we're asking of them so don't stop trying to control the outcome of what you want slow down go at the pace of your animal not the pace of your mind and instead follow your animals energy flow they're going to follow their natural impulses and i think that's where they're so good at teaching us to listen to our bodies and find that space between what feels good and the growth space depending on what they they are telling you through intuitive animal communications and i think this is a very big and a very important concept and I'm here to guide you as much as I can through my my free Facebook lives like this one and uh, all the resources over on my uh, on my website so as I said make a choice today if you haven't already take your take the dosha quiz for your animals by just subscribe when you subscribe over at sarahjanefarrell.com um, you'll get taken to the quiz and you can take that multiple times for your various animals and of course as always post photographs of your animals and let me know what dosha type they are and you may be surprised um, just how well they complement your personality type remember we're moving through the feeding cycle of, of the five elements of traditional Chinese medicine all the time so and the doshas fit into into those um, sort of primary um, types so even though we, we all have all of the characteristics of, of the fire, earth, metal, water, wood, or the kapha, pita, dosha types, um, the vata types, we're, we're moving depending on the environment and who we're interacting with. And it's the same for our animals. So um, go deeper, get curious, have a beginner's mind, and have fun exploring the new things that your animals want you. Okay, I'm coming up. He's fine. Um, want want where they want to go with you um, okay Daisy okay 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 I'm coming and that's it my cat my dog is pushing me um, telling me to pay attention to the kitten so from my pack and our newest member say bye say goodbye say bye everybody have a beautiful rest of your day and remember, the power of choice is yours and yours alone. So make it count, make it matter. And as always, tread gently on your soft animal body. Um, know that you are enough for your animals and you are enough um, for, your, for, for your, the people that you care about and, and that love you. So make it matter, make it count and know that Inch by inch is a cinch, yard by yard is yard. So slow everything down. Listen to what your animals have to say. And, and listen to the lessons that they're, they're offering to you. And you will have nothing but a beautiful, fulfilling, rich relationship that hopefully lasts forever. Um, because when they go into spirit, they still stay with us. And I was at one stage quite, quite curious to know if, um, if Bailey 
was my Winston cat who passed the other day in a new body, but he has told me no, that he's a new soul and he's come into my life with his own lessons and his own his own um his own personality and characteristics and, and love to to share with me and, and my daughter and my other cats and dogs. So um, that's it. Okay, Daisy, thank you. All right, bye everyone. Mm -hmm.